Hello and uh, welcome back for another lecture and here we're going to go ahead and design a concrete uh, bridge deck. Traditionally there's a couple ways you can design a bridge deck. One is the uh, uh, strip method or analytical method and the other one is the uh, imperial method which doesn't require much calculation. We're going to go ahead and use the uh, analytical method or a strip method. Basically you take a, a strip of it, the, you treat the concrete deck depending on which way it is orientated as a, a strip of a beam, so you can calculate uh, everything. And that's the method we're going to use. And one of the things when you design a bridge uh, deck, you really know what one, one, you need to know what is the size of your bridge deck so you can calculate your uh, de dead load moment. And here we're going to say it's an eight inch uh, thick deck, which include half an inch of wearing surface, so it's basically seven and a half inch plus um, uh, half an inch. And again, per Ashto 9.71, I'm going to put on a board, we meet the minimum requirement for the thickness of the deck. Then uh, what we're going to do, we're going to provide a design criteria for our bridge deck. And the design criteria is based on, you can see the cross section of my uh, uh, bridge here. It's going to be six girder and it's going to be about eight feet apart. And then you're going to have a distance of uh, between the uh, center line of girder and the um, barrier, you're going to have about three feet and three quarter inches. So number of the girder is going to be six girder, uh, the uh, spacing is eight feet, uh, the deck top cover is going to be two and a half inches, the bottom cover to, to over the reinforcement is going to be one inches, the concrete is going to be 150 pound per cubic feet, and we're going to use a 4,500 pound concrete, and of course resteel is going to be uh, 60,000 KSI, and uh, the future wearing surface is going to be 25 pound per square foot, and this is a three span continuous uh, bridge. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So one of the things first I want to know, can we use, uh, what I'm going to put on the screen, uh, table A41. And if we do that, there's a certain criteria we have to satisfy, and which I've highlighted. It says, uh, and I can read to you, maybe table A41 may be used if you satisfy any of those uh, uh, below it. And, and it says at least a three girder and having a width of not less than 14 feet. So we go here because we have six girder and our uh, width is uh, 40 feet. So they put a check on that one. And also it says uh, um, a minimum total uh, overhang with uh, 21 inches. We got three feet and uh, three and quarter inches. We can satisfy that. And then also says the maximum total overhang width equal to be smaller than 0.625 times the girder spacing and six feet which we have basically satisfied that also. So we can say, um, we can say uh, our uh, A, we have three girder, uh, B, we have uh, 40 feet according to that is more than 14 feet, so that checks out. And the other one was uh, uh, the overhang. Uh, for the overhang, let's see if I can spell that, H in overhang B we have, I'm going to convert this to be, uh, it says uh, 21 inches, so that's uh, 1.75 feet, and we are uh, less than uh, ours, uh, that's uh, 3.27, so it's 3.27, and which is again less than uh, uh, 6 feet, or S is equal to 8 feet. So we satisfied that, that means we can use uh, table uh, A41. So table A4-1 is the... Okay, so we did step one, step two. Let's go to step three, let me make a border here. And uh, we're gonna go to uh, step three. And that's uh, computing the... Uh, um, a dead load moment. Computing moment due to a dead load. And uh, so w first we're going to go ahead and um, look at the uh, DC, which is the dead weight of the concrete. We're going to say DC and we said here that uh, the it was 150 pound uh, 150 pound per cubic feet concrete, 
and there we have uh, uh, eight inches and let's go ahead and say uh, eight inches convert that to a 12 multiply by 150 pounds so it's 0.15 kip per cubic feet so that was going to take me a uh, I want another one so I'm going to take a, a one foot strip I'm going to take a divide time one foot again and that's one strip uh, that's going to give me uh, I have it someplace here. 0.1 kip uh, foot. <coughs> Sorry, I'm mean 0.1 kip per foot. So now I am going to go ahead and calculate the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 wearing surface, DW, and that was given us as 25 pound, so it's 0 0.025 kip uh, per foot, which is already given. So this is the uh, we're gonna like, take a look at like it's gonna be a uh, uh, basically uh, a beam with a uh, uniform distributed load on top of it, and that's what these load this W. It's going to have a DC, we're going to have DW, and so on and so forth. And that's how we're going to treat, treat this. So now we're going to find that, and next is going to, we're going to find the, uh, um, need a space, I'm going to go over here. We're going to have the positive bending moment. We'll call it M plus. If you look at the, uh, we, this is a three span continuous span. So if you look at the uh, um, chart I got on, uh, on the uh, screen, take a look at that. And that's how we're going to calculate it. You're going to see, the, you see the M plus right there. Well, I'm going to write right here. M plus is going to come out to, uh, here you see that this is a 0.08. So normally, when we have a, a single span, we say W L squared divided by eight. In this case, it's going to be like a W L squared divided by that factor. So it's going to be 0 0.08 time W L. When in, in our case, L is going to be S. So it's going to be W S squared. And uh, for the negative moment, it's going to be 0 0.1. Uh, it is a 0 0.1, yes. So negative moment, m is going to be my it's going to be point one, w s square. And therefore, from here, I'm going to say go ahead. Uh, my m d c positive, it's going to be uh, um, point zero eight time. My load came out to, I calculated it, I know I did, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and span is 8 squared, and S is 8, that's 8 squared, and I end up with the 0 0.152 cube foot, just right, this is my limit, so I'm going to stay right there. And now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for uh, MW. Um, the W plus, and that's going to come out to uh, um, 0 0.08 time 0 0.025 time 8 square. And that comes out to uh, 0 0.128. Same unit, kip foot. Okay, so now we gotta do this. We're gonna go ahead and calculate the negative moment. And uh, from here, use a different color. My uh, MDC negative, it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna use about 85% of the uh, value. So I'm gonna have uh, equal 
and the minus equal this is 85 percent and then the was 10.1 multiplied by w w l came out to uh, it's still a point one point one time eight squared Point one time point one time eight squared that's correct and that's going to come out to point five four point five four four cube foot and now I'm going to have a m d w negative it's going to be a uh, same thing eighty five percent time uh, load was a point zero two five and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.1 eight square the span and that comes out to uh, 0 0.136 and point one three six so that complete step number three all right we're going to go ahead with a step number four step number four is going to be bending moment due to a life load and if you look at the table A4, we did all the stuff we said we're going to use table A4. So we're going to go ahead and based on table A4, look at the spacing. And uh, we're going to find out that our maximum, the uh, negative ML plus is going to, positive moment is going to become, uh, I mean, life load positive moment is going to become 569 kip per foot. So for the negative one, we're going to, our W, our beam is a W36 by 150. I forgot to put that down. So now the top uh, part of the flange is about one foot. And uh, based on uh, steel design, the manual, we're going to go, uh, the uh, uh, section is going to be one quarter of that. It's going to be uh, uh, from, uh, for design uh, section, it's going to be three inches. So it's going to be one quarter of one foot. It's going to be three inches. And that's what our number is going to be. X going to be three inches. So if we use three inches, then our ML going to ML and negative, and that's going to come out to uh, 565 cube foot. Okay, and that take care of our step four. Let's go to step five right here. And in step five, we basically go to go ahead and uh, uh, calculate the total. Uh, uh, factor. So if you look at the uh, uh, the uh, what I have on a chart here, table, um, not the other table. If you look at a table 3.4.1-1 for load combination and load factor, and we're going to go ahead and use a strength 1, and if we use a strength 1, our MF uh, positive, it's going to come out to MF positive, it's going to come out to, we're going to see all those DC, DD, W, and it has a gamma. So we don't know what the gamma is. And if you go to the next table, which is a 3.41-2, uh, for DC component, our uh, the factor is 1.25. So I'm going to have 1.25 right here, and that's going to be uh, time MDC plus. Then plus, I'm going to have the uh, uh, DW, and the DW around here at the same table is going to be, says uh, for, uh, it's going to be uh, 1.5 DW, where is the first right there, 1.5. So we're going to use 1.5 time uh, DW plus M. DW plus. And the next one we're going to have is uh, uh, 1.75 time life load. If we go back to the other table and we can see the life load is 1.75. So plus 1.75 M life load. And therefore my uh, M F plus is going to come out to, uh, let me see, I have enough room here. And that's going to come out to 
multiplied by MDC plus chemo to uh, 0.544. And plus 1.5 times MDCW came out to 0.136. Then plus 1.75 times life load came out to 569. And that comes out to 10.79. Uh, uh, so 10.79 kip foot. I need to write this down because I want to keep that. So I'm going to say uh, right here, M F plus came out to 1079 kip foot. The same way we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate the uh, negative moment, which I don't have a room for it right here because I'm running down. So I'm going to go ahead and erase up here a little bit. Continue. We're going to go ahead with the MF negative, and that came out that the same factor is going to apply. So it's going to be 1.25 multiplied by uh, uh, MD negative came out to 0.544. The other one should have been that's a point. F that's wrong. That's the um, 0.512, and this should be 0.544. That's better. And then we're going to have uh, plus 1.5 times the negative come out to 0 0.136. 0 0.136 plus 1.75 times negative life load came out 565. 565, and that's correct. I have that. Let me make sure I got that right. So this is going to come out to 1077. 10.77 kip foot, and I'm going to go down here. M F negative came out to 10.77 kip foot. Okay, so that was step number five. Okay, let's go to step number six. But I need a lot of room, so I'm going to erase all this stuff right here. You're going to see. I, it's a, this is a new method I have discovered, and it's going to erase just like in a second. One, two, three. Huh? Pretty good. So anyway, let's go to step number. Uh, that was. Uh, it's going to be six. All right. And here we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate the effective uh, uh, depth of the uh, slab depth, effective depth. Um, so uh, if you look at the what I have on the screen, the effective depth is basically is uh, uh, for d plus it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be the uh, thickness of the slab itself uh, minus the uh, um, the integrated wearing surface which was half an inch here, and then minus the uh, the cover at the bottom, which is one inch, and uh, then minus the diameter of the bar. Let's say we're going to assume uh, a number five uh, free bar. And so the diameter is going to come out for that. It's going to be uh, <coughs> 0.62. I think it's 0 0.62. 0 0.625. 0 0.625 inch. So we're going to be minus 0.625 inch divided by 2. And that D plus is going to come out to a 619. And the negative one is going to be basically, uh, it's going to be your cover, I mean your uh, slab thickness, minus the top cover, which is two and a half inches, and then minus the diameter of the bar, divided by two. And that will give me about uh, 519. Okay, so that's step number six. We're going to move on to step number seven. Go ahead and try the pos for positive moment, and step is going to be seven for uh, positive, positive moment. Let's screw that up. 
positive moment. Can't spell this, so I became an engineer. So for positive moment, we're gonna go ahead and assume we're gonna we said we're gonna assume number five rebar, and let's go at six inches. Number five rebar. Let me just say this here. Try number five at six inches. Spacey. Now you gotta remember one thing here. This is going to be a um, one foot section. We're going to look at it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, okay, we're going to use number five rebar at six inch apart. So let's find out what's the area of the steel going to be in that one foot section. It's going to be AS. The area of the steel, if you pick it up from the book, the area also for number five is going to become uh, 0.31 inch square. And I'm going to have a 0.31 inch square and multiply that by 12 inch divided by 6 because we have a 1 foot uh, wide uh, strip and the total steel in that area is going to become 0.62 inch square per that section. So and you've seen this formula a lot before. Let me write this formula down the, the block. It's going to be A equal AS time FOI divided by uh, 0.85 time FC time B. In our case, it's going to become AS came out 0.62 and multiply FOI is a 60,000 KSI and we have 0.85 times 4.5 KSI is for the concrete and I think the B was uh, 12 inches. And there we have everything is in inches. And they're going to come out to a 0.18 inch. All right, we're good there. And uh, now we know that uh, phi time MN, nominal moment, uh, is same as a phi time AS multiplied by uh, FOI time D minus A2. You've seen this formula a thousand times in reinforced concrete design. So now we're going to have uh, 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.62 and multiplied by uh, 60 times 6.19, which is that, minus A divided by 2. A was uh, 0 0.81 divided by 2. So now I'm going to get right here. That comes out to, if something is not right. So we got KSI inch, inch. All right, let's divide by 12 make it foot because I have a uh, kip foot over there. So divide by 12, and that's going to come out to 16.4 uh, kip foot. And that is for positive moment came out to. 10.79, so 16.4 kip. It's way more than 10.79. It's kind of overkill here. We got to reduce this a little bit. Um, let me erase this stuff, and we can continue. I'm going to keep all this formula here. I need these. Okay, so we tried six inch spacing and we found out it's a little bit overkill. Let's increase the spacing. Maybe we can go nine inch. <coughs> so I'm going to leave this. I'm going to just go ahead and nine inch. I'm going to use a different color. Uh, okay, that's going to stay the same, I believe. Yes, 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 yes. I'm not going to erase that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, D. The AS is going to be different. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and try number four. Oh, it's number five still. 
Traffic number five at uh, nine inch. Let's go to nine inch. Nine inch. And then uh, the area is going to become different here. So that's going to become 12 divided by 9. And this number is going to be different. 12 divided by 9, <coughs> that's going to come out to, I got point <coughs> four one three. Point four one three inches. So now I'm going to come in here. And that's going to be, uh, instead of 0.62, it's going to be 0 0.413. And my answer in here is going to come out to 0.54 inches. And uh, same thing, everything here, AS is going to become 0.413 right here. That's why it's good to put these in Excel. You, you know, just change number as do, do you like. So the 0 0.14, 60, 0 0.9, 0 0.14, 60. 6.9 minus this going to be 0.54 divided by 2. And that's going to give me about uh, 11, which 11 basically is better than 10 point cutting it close. It's your call. So now we have this. We tried at 6 inch. It was overkill. We came back and changed it to uh, nine inch and a lot closer. That was for positive moment. So now we're going to go ahead and try for a negative moment. OK, we're going to move to step eight. I'm going to change this to step eight right here. Let's call this step eight. And then for the negative moment uh, for life load, I mean, for negative m moment. Negative moment. And we're going to try the uh, same thing. Make this back to 6 inches. And this we already calculated <coughs> from previous one was, uh, I think it went to 0.81. Uh, I can redo it again anyway. So we had point, uh, the a this is going to be changed back to uh, 6 inches. So that was 6 inches. And that was came out to 0.62 inch square. And then here we're going to have uh, equal AS came out to 0 0.62. 0 0.62 times 60. Divide that by uh, uh, 0.85 time 4.5 time 12 and we got 0 0.81 inches uh, same as before and then we're going to come back in here we're going to use the same exact thing as our uh, area was back to 0 0.62 and instead of a 619 now remember our d is different because we said uh, I raised it. The negative was, it was someplace, it got erased. And that was um, 519. So that was 519. If you go back to your node and divide it by the um, 0.81 divided by 2, and time divided by 12, make a foot, keep foot. So that come out to. Uh, 1335 and we know 1335 1335 is bigger than our negative which was 1077 there we go so that works out fine now we're going to move to step number nine again i got to erase board space here Okay, step number nine, we're going to go ahead with the distribution of the, uh, um, the reinforcement, uh, reinforcement distribution at the bottom of the slab. All right. <coughs> 
So now the formula is going to be, as you see on the board, the distribution is a 220. Divide that by square root of uh, uh, S. And our S is the effective uh, width of the, uh, of the uh, spacing. If you take out the 3 inch uh, from each side, that could become 8 minus uh, 3 and minus 3 inch. That becomes 7 and a half. So S is equal to 7.5 feet. And therefore, we're going to have 220 divided by square root of uh, 7.5. And that comes out to close to 80%. And, and the goal is it has to be, it, that which is more than 67% really is, uh, it's uh, too much. So, um, well, really the area of the steel times 67%. And the area of the steel which I erased for 9 inch was, uh, for 9 inch was, uh, I think it was uh, 0.413. Yeah, it was 0 0.413, 0 0.413, that was for 9 inch, and times 67%, and that will give us uh, 0.28 inches square. Then we can say, okay, that's the distribution factor, that's the minimum, so we can go ahead and use uh, a 12 inch, which came out to 0 0.31 inches. So if we use 12 inch spacing, our distribution factor is 0 0.312, which we calculated at the beginning here, so that will check out. We can use 12 inch at the bottom uh, mat.